the moment you have all been waiting for. Chrissy Mayer is here, and uh, I have been on Chrissy's show, and now she is on mine. She is well aware that I have a producer in the background who is pretty much as young as most TV news producers that I used to work with, three months. I mean, okay, they're not that young in TV news, but we pay them basically like they are three months old, and that's why the quality is what it is. Chrissy, today we're going to talk about, since you also have a show on dating advice, and yes. I would like to know your top five for 2023 for people. But before we get to that, there was a lot of uh, hubbub about a year or so ago that uh, people were starting to get divided on online dating sites into vaccinated status. You could get a little sticker that says I'm vaccinated. There were governments that were pushing this. I think the UK um, really wanted to get people on board with this, like, you know, push it on the online dating sphere and I guess socially shame people to get the vaccine. And so that's nothing new, but Pew came out with some research a couple months ago that I just stumbled across and wanted to ask you as the dating resident dating expert here <laughs> that half of recent online daters in the USA say it's important to see COVID-19 vaccination status on profile. So first question wow. for you, do you hear this from people? This is crazy, I, and but I'm not surprised at all because our culture, uh, our employers have 100% reinforced this idea that your your medical freedom, your medical business, your medical decisions are not just your business. They're everyone's business. They should be public knowledge. Uh, remember when everybody was getting their first jab? They were be, People were being dumb. They were posting their straight-up cards with all their information on it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah, Brian Stelter was telling people if you worked in the news business and you hadn't posted, like he was mad at the Fox News people because they weren't yep. posting their selfies, their vaccine selfies. And so even the journalists were shaming people into yeah. posting their vaccine and I've selfies. I've been <laughs> on Fox, I've been on Gutfeld, and I'm not vaccinated. So if that gives you a sense of uh, not everyone is, is in the same place of the same mind on this. And so of course, and that's the, the, the first part of PSYOP is psychological. So if they can link sex, something that most people really want with getting vaccinated. <laughs> great. Oh, this is, you know, it's just a quick, it's another percentage of people that you can trick into getting this. Oh, look, this is attached with dating and sex. You're not going to find your person. You're cutting your chances. You're cutting your percentage of eligible bachelors or females if you don't get this. And uh, it's just disgusting. It's really nobody's business. But what's interesting, I'm sure this article is just going to cover the people that are like, yes, they're like, you know, they're like just all about the vaccine. They're in the vaccine cult. But they're probably not going to mention is like, that it's very important the other way around too. I mean, we just heard See? about a case like, in, New in New Zealand where parents had to basically turn over custody of their six month old baby to the government because they requested unjabbed blood for a heart transfusion surgery or a heart, you know, heart surgery, basically a very serious surgery for this infant. And because they wanted unjabbed blood, not only did the hospital reject their request. I mean, and they had all their donors line up. They weren't asking for it. They had friends and people they knew, unjabbed blood, ready to go, ready to be donors. But not only did they say no, they don't want to set a precedent for this because, of course, the hospital doesn't want people knowing that maybe that's a better option. But they took the government took control of this baby until this uh, surgery is over, which is fucking wild. And we've all just become accustomed to this is your private information is now public. Everyone needs to know it's another form of acceptable discrimination. In addition to your political beliefs, who you voted for, um, it's gotten pretty gross. So did you fact check that New Zealand story? Because I had not, I heard about it, but I have not done a deep dive into it because we've had three blizzards in a oh. week and a half. And but have you you've done the deep dive on that? And I legit? I mean they were reporting about it on Daily Wire, and I don't think that they're like a fluff bullshitty yeah. okay. entity. So no. yeah, I listened to their their morning show, and they were like all about talking about it a couple weeks ago. Fascinating. So, yeah. So like you were bringing up. Um, oh well, hang on, that's not the one I was looking for. But Van Dam says the three year mark of the experiment ends April twenty twenty three. Um, okay, but this is what I was gonna show. I did earlier troll with a purpose, pure blood, because as you were mentioning, 
Yes. A lot of the studies and articles about this will say that it's important for people who are vaccinated to find other vaccinated dating prospects. But actually, as you were bringing up, it goes the opposite direction and, and potentially even more contentious in that direction. Um, you know, because there are a lot of people who are concerned about procreating with somebody mm-hmm. who has, and we can't really, we're going to cut the stream. I should just say, cause like any talk, well, I'll just show it right now. So, you know what we're talking about? If you just reverse, reverse what we can't talk about on YouTube. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay? Maybe so, if you were to highlight one particular line there, I will, uh, yes. that's definitely what we're not going to talk about. We are not going to talk about any claims this. that vaccines alter a person's genetic makeup. No, we would not say we're that. We're not saying anything about that. We're not. But anyway, that. so, but if, if say, you know, you were concerned about something like that, uh, you might want to find somebody on Tinder who did not get the vaccine. So that's the other, that it goes the other direction, but that does not get reported, which is why I thought this was a fascinating topic as I cover censorship, because people do not um, hear that side of it. Cause they want the angle of this article to be, to further shame people into getting it. Like, look, if, if shame or threat of lack of sex is going to do it for you. That's going to be your reason. If after two years, you still haven't. But if you're like, oh, this is going to hurt my chances with women. Then boom, they've got you on that. Okay, you're you sent me this. Wow. So yeah, I mean, parents lose custody of sick baby after refusing blood from vaccinated donor. You know, here's this is interesting. This this goes back to my early days when I was a reporter in television news. I covered this case in Knoxville, Tennessee, of a mom whose daughter was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she decided to forgo the recommended treatments, even though it was basically the, the, the kid was given months to live anyway, uh, because she wanted to pray for her daughter and the case centered around whether that was child neglect. She was, that was, that was the charge that oh, wow. uh, she neglected her child because she wanted to pray and forgo chemotherapy Um yeah. And it was, it was really fascinating, but I remember back then wondering like, where is the line on, you know, where, where does a parent's right to sort of default from the conventional medical recommendations turn into neglect? And like, you're seeing more and more, I think back wow. then yeah. it was like, you know, this was like a very weird case. I mean, that's why I was covering in the news business, but now you're seeing stuff like this, which is, you know, not that that wasn't concerning too, but, but this is, you know, this it's is really gross because I'm sure these parents lined up plenty of donors with plenty of blood, but the hospital's like, oh, well, what if they don't have enough? Like, it just sounds like such a bullshit excuse because they don't want the press. They don't want they don't want it to even be an idea to people who hadn't thought of it before. Like, they don't want to uh, plant any seed of doubt in people who've already gotten it. Like, oh, shit. Well, we didn't really think about what would be the effect on babies. We didn't really think about what would be the effect on uh breastfeeding um oh, thank you so for bringing that there's, up. there's a lot of people not, not who hadn't thought of that because we were because it's because it's safe it's all very safe so why would you think of that yeah kk westbury saying i'll say test breast milk you know what you don't have to test though for um mRNA is uh, allisonwinepromo.com. So Ooh. if you're looking for, say you're on Tinder and you're going for the pure blood or you're going for the vax blood, whatever it is, you don't have to worry about vaccination status with the with the wine because it's just, uh, it's all natural regardless. I don't know if you want vaccinated wine, you probably are not watching my channel. That would just be weird. I would love a wine called pure blood. I actually had a local <laughs> wine store sell um a brand of wine it just or it was called like insurrection i bought six bottles because i was like i was there i gotta get this okay, i haven't tried it yet what about rogue i mean one of mine is named rogue is got it gotta do rogue i love a good malbec i love um i'll drink really anything and basically any wine <laughs> it's always <laughs> wine time I don't, I don't, I don't love a Moscato. I don't love a Merlot, but I could be convinced. I haven't, I'm sure there's like a nice Merlot out there. I say Malbecs are like the poor man's Pinot Noir. And, and, and these are (laughs) very, they're Australian. Well, these are from Argentina. Okay. Um, but they're like, uh, you know, cause a Pinot Noir is 
well, it's a little lighter. These are these are like between a Pinot and a Cab, but okay. but you you get like the you know pinky up feeling of a Pinot mm-hmm. with like the robust flavor of a Cab. It's like somewhere in the middle there. But anyway, these are my wines that you guys. It's running. You know the the clock is running out for Christmas, so go to AllisonWinePromo.com. You know that your loved ones that you're not talking to right now, but you might over a glass of wine because you forget about how they made different decisions than you did over the last couple of years. <laughs> you can agree on this. Uh, Have a few glasses of wine. Forget about it. It's The Atlantic says it's time for amnesty. You may think that's total BS. We can talk about that in a second. But anyway, if you're going to re-enter in conversation, do it over something you can agree on. Allison Wine yeah. Promo.com. And you get 50% off the wine. And you get 50% off shipping. And if it's your first time buying, you get a free bottle. So it's like, come on. And if you're already a wine drinker, what are you doing? This is a way you can support my work and um, also a company that supports free speech. And they're all wines that come from very small operations and very high Mm. altitude, which means the grapes work very hard to protect themselves under the sun and so it affects the flavor and there's fewer pesticides. So it's a natural fermentation, all kinds of good stuff, hand harvested, blah, 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 blah. But also if you like coffee, you can go to twininginecoffee.com slash Allison. It's an organic coffee roast. They sell, um, little travel packets so you can yeah you can go get your little samplers let's see if they have it here they probably have uh oh by the way the espresso that's what i'm drinking these days because i just got a brand new espresso machine for christmas for my parents holiday gifts see you can get all these little handmade gifts ornaments cute i love a cute little ornament a mug Um, spoon i'm not sure why you would need that but you know what it's there in case you do that's fancy to mix your little sugar in it's your little got coffee wholesale. Spin. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. Um, the Keturah tea is one of my favorites, as you see here on the left. I do this Ooh. a lot. It's like a black tea. Tea that's uh, made from the coffee fruit. Okay, enough about that. Let's get back I to the I love that. I love that because if your family would not let you hang around because you weren't vaccinated, then you go for the wine. But if your family, you're all on the same page on the jabs, go for the coffee. You, It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Or say you had to drink a ton of wine at night in order to make it through the conversation with your family member that you you basically can't stand anymore. You know you're <laughs> going to have a hangover the next day. So you need yeah. coffee to wake up. Okay, so we've got you covered here. We've got you covered here. Let's go back to um, the study, all right? Because you brought up the politics of all of this. And I think what's interesting is that if you look at, they did both who cares about vaccination status And then how strongly do you feel about your political affiliation? And they line up pretty similarly, you know? So like, Mm -hmm. you know, if I very much care about COVID-19 status, I also very much care about political affiliation for someone I'm going to date. And if I don't care at all, I also sort of don't care. Like it's 34, 23. I mean, you know, not to 2025, 24, 34, 23, 18. Like it kind of follows that. Not shockingly, it's Democrats who care more about your vaccination status than Republicans, because that's been totally politicized in the, in the, I think mostly the media, but also by our government. Um, but yeah, once again, you read through this and you don't see anything really about the, uh, pure blood stuff. So I think they're missing wow. out on that. I think that would be a fun, fun thing to explore. But why see, this is what Pew research. I don't know what their political leaning is, but left usually. Yeah, why would They'll we focus on why would we focus on the side that's wrong and see, there could possibly be no benefit to not getting vaxxed. So why would they even focus on those people? You know, why would I they think- Isn't it funny that Trump is the one who rolled out the vaccine. He did the warp speed, but everyone still associates Trump voters with unvaccinated. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of the same way that um anti-Semitism is linked with him, even though he like moved the, you know, embassy to Jerusalem and yeah. Right? Am I making this yes, he did mind? do that. That was, that was a big okay, deal. I, it's, I had, a, I had a baby a few months ago and like all history has gone out the window. I don't even know if I like he where was, I live anymore. He was very good to the Jews. He was very good to the blacks. He did a lot for historically black universities and colleges, you know, you look at his NFT days. release today, which I'm going to pull up. He also was like <laughs> a hunter. He worked in, for the NFL. He did all I these other wish. things. The NFT is fine. Whoever's going to buy it is, is going to buy it. If someone's still into NFTs. And, and Trump is no stranger to putting his name on products. There was, before he ran for president, there was Trump 
ties trump wine so i i just think they should have framed it differently they should have been like look if you're gonna donate to me anyway to the campaign or just to me personally you know donate and if you if you donate a hundred dollars we'll throw in a couple of these nfts or whatever right don't make it like we are selling this thing just be like just make it seem like it's an added bonus for supporters like hey you're getting something for your donation Ivor McDonald says, I'm not allowed to talk in my family. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, look at this. So why am I talking to 10 guys? The rise and fall of dating apps. This came out uh, in The Guardian a month or so ago. And it talks about the negative <laughs> effects of online dating. And I, I got to say, I do think kind of the commodification of relationship it does make me wonder, like people, you know, I think back like 100, 200 years ago, even though you probably died before you could get divorced anyway. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's probably one of those yeah. things it's not worth like comparing, but, but you were a little nervous to get divorced because you probably weren't going to find somebody else, you know? Right. And, or this, you know, maybe it's a social shame too, but it's like, no, you just stick it out. But now you can just go back and shop for a new person if you get annoyed with the person you're, you know, you're dating. And I do right. think that, that, yeah, like the commodification of like everything, but but people specifically is part of the same trend of this, like, you have to vote the way I do. You have to like all these things, you know, otherwise you're not just different. You are, you know, you're like untouchable, unclean. Like that's, that's yeah. a new thing, you know, I'm endorsing you by knowing you. And that's one of the things I try to do on this uh, podcast because yeah. I used to be in TV news. Right. And and that's like, they've driven that wedge between people with the mantra that like, even in, in journalism, which somebody said in the chat, you called Brian Seltzer a journalist. No, I didn't. I said, Brian Seltzer was telling journalists to post there. Okay. I did not say that, but, <laughs> but they, they tell people that you're endorsing ideas by talking to somebody and a journalist isn't allowed to engage with those ideas or they're endorsing them, which is stupid that there's a basis of journalism is listening to people's different ideas. What do you think about yeah, online? Yeah, it's, there's very much the guilty by association uh, back in the day, you know, all you found your, your spouse through your community. There was a lot of community shame uh, if you were to get divorced and it's kind of like, you'd be like, Oh God, well I have to go back and out into this community and, deal with the shame and then maybe try to find somebody that I think that just wasn't happening and it wasn't as easy. There weren't as many options and there, 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 and this is online dating. It just, it's kind of the mirage of, of many options. It's, it's kind of like, it makes you feel like the, the world is your oyster and you've got hundreds of options. It's like, you really don't. Um, and I, I it's funny cause I, I bet it's mostly women who are like, more politically picky about their mates. I bet guys, it really just comes down. Like I'm friends with a lot of guys. I'm, I think it's part of being a comic. I feel like I have a guy sense of humor. I feel like guys, it really comes down to like, are you young? Are you hot? Uh, and like, I think maybe like politics is becoming more important, but with women, it's like the vaccine, who did you vote for? Like politics is probably way more important to them. Like a certain type of woman. Uh, I'm just, I think it's cause I live in New York and I used to live in Brooklyn and these are the types of women I'm kind of thinking of. Oh my God. Oh, em Emily Rhodes. I thought, I thought it said Erica Rhodes, which is another comedian that I know. <laughs> um, I thought it was just so funny. The title of this article, why am I talking to 10 guys? I thought it was going to be like, why am I talking to 10 guys? I only have three holes. <laughs> um, well, I would say, <laughs> I was going to just say like the difference between, you know, you hear about um, people dating a lot of different guys at the same time. Like if you talk to somebody who's 85 years old, they'll tell you that they were like dating a ton of people. And you're like, wow, were you a whore? I mean, what, what are you, but the difference was they weren't like sleeping with the 10 guys. They dating right. back then just meant like you went to a movie, you know, or you went like, and so, yeah, you were like shopping around you met, and, and what this article yeah. is saying is that basically, okay, it's become so formalized to look for dates through apps. We've forgotten how to approach people in person. I, I don't think it's necessarily like even forgotten. I think, um, I, I just think, yeah, I, I think it's somehow affected how people can relate to each other. Uh, it's so, it, it's human nature to, I think, be lazy and, um, and, and yeah. risk averse. And so it's like, if you can hide behind a screen, it just made it easier for people to just do all kinds of things where they disengage from their real life. And, uh, right. I, I mean, I see that in everything like food, 
whatever it is, you know, you just, you have, you don't have any buy-in anymore. And I, can, I, I don't know. I don't you can swipe for you guys think? on your lunch app. You can swipe for, uh, you can swipe for dates, like on the subway. It's, it's so easy. And we have become a culture that's really all about efficiency and, you know, working smarter, not harder, which is some, sometimes a great thing. But in the case of dating, like every single serious boyfriend I've had, I have met in real life. And like, who knows if I would have swiped on them if I was just looking at pictures, right? Like many of my boyfriends I met in the dark at a bar after a couple of drinks. Like who knows if we would have hit it off if I were just looking at like fully lit pictures. Um, probably not. I mean, there was a, there was a guy I dated who was bartending and he, it was his bar and he built a raised platform. He had a built in raised platform in this bar. And we hit it off. We're talking for like an hour. He's making drinks. He comes down off the bar. We're eye to eye. He is also five, three, but by then we had already kind of, he had already kind of charmed me. And so I was like, all right, I guess I have to date this guy for two months. Uh, Cause I don't want to be a bitch, but anyway, Why, it, he was if short? I, if I, yeah, he, he was like five, Four. but if i had my husband's like profile, five six my husband I probably swiped nope so yeah we're losing the you gotta do it all you have to keep those muscles up the, the you gotta be on the apps but you also gotta talk to random people in line at the deli and you also gotta maybe uh talk to people at the gym also maybe go to a painting class or some shit like that like it really depends who you want to meet if, if you want to meet like a young professional guy like i always tell my single friends like go to steakhouses during happy hour like in a, in a city somewhere like that's probably uh a good spot like just kind of hang out at the bar but don't stay too late because then you look like a whore so Why not there's anything wrong to... with that <laughs> i feel like i saw you on a stream with a bunch of lawyers once and everybody was somebody somebody specifically was getting ragged on because she wouldn't date a short guy what i have dated many short guys I like, like, it wasn't you, it was somebody else. Okay. I have What's had wrong two... with you? Yeah, okay, so you're not saying there's anything wrong with the short... Because, like, listen, my husband's 5'6", no. but he could definitely kill you with his eyes closed, for sure. Ooh, fun. Yeah, I've had two, and I'm not, <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah, they met this Saturday night, right? I'm not someone who needs a tall. Um, I had two... One boyfriend was, like, 5'7", one was, like, maybe 5'4". So, it's not that big a deal. But if you're, like, the type of person where, like, you have to see those stats, and if you don't see six foot you're gonna say no you're just you're really missing out on a lot of great guys but like sometimes men are like that too sometimes men won't give a woman a second look if they are over a certain weight or or, or height or make guys don't like yeah. sometimes like date girls that are taller than them i mean i think it's a power thing I, that's kind of i don't know that's I, I you know when i when i would see people after like they would back when i was in seattle for instance and i was on television i'd see people out in the field they'd say you're so short and skinnier because <laughs> I looked fat and tall on television, apparently. But here's the deal. Like, there's no point of reference when you're watching on television. So there's no way they would have known. They just made that up in their head. So I, my theory is that, well, the camera does add weight. But when it comes to height, I think you associate height with authority. And so when you when you see someone as an authority, but you don't really know how tall they are, you assume that they're tall. And then when you see, like, I'm very, I'm 5'3", like you. So I'm yeah, you short. seem then, taller. You definitely you sound taller That's because you think i'm three. your authority figure right <laughs> yeah you I'm know i like the guy who could kill me but chooses not to but i like the idea that they could that they're physically able to did Is you that date weird? danny devito no <laughs> no god Okay, say what you just said again. You want to know okay. that a guy can do what? Okay, this is going to be a hot take, but like, I kind of like the idea that a guy could kill me, but he chooses not to. Like, it's kind of hot that they're strong enough. They are, would be able to, but they are using their power for good, not evil. Yeah, I think my husband probably fits in that category. My my yeah. ex-boyfriend, who was not happy that I married him, called him a trained killer. Um, So that was, that was not, he did not get invited <laughs> to our wedding. Um. Yeah. Okay, I want to I want to talk about uh, again this topic in a second um, that we're not going we would never be talking about. This is the YouTube's misinformation policy that vaccines alter a person's genetic makeup. So anyway, we're not going to be talking about that on the other platforms. We're not, no. but we are going to be killing this stream on YouTube if you're watching it there. Why? Just because we feel like it. 
Uh, but one quick thing I wanted to do is just remind people that if you go to allisonmorrow.locals.com, you can sign up for my editorial board and put questions in ahead of time for interviews. And I have a couple of questions I want to throw your way, Chrissy, before we kill the stream. Mm -hmm. I also want yeah. you to tell people where they can find you and watch yeah. your YouTube channel and oh, whatever. Yeah. You can definitely find me uh, Monday nights. Uh, I'm on Compound Media, and that's that dating show that Allison mentioned. It's called The Wet Spot. It's on 7 p.m. Eastern on compoundmedia.com. They've also got a lot of other great shows. That's Anthony Cumia's network. Then there, here's my lovely YouTube channel. Uh, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern is The Wet Spot on my channel. Always a good blend of female and the occasional male panelist. So that's every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then uh, Fridays, you can catch me on Friday Night Tights, 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Neuronics YouTube channel. And I try to put out like four or five new interviews a week. Uh, I also have an audio version on like Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. And then, yeah. What else? Awesome. What else am I missing? Oh, and for stand-up show dates, go to chrissymayer.com. If you live in New York City, I'll be at Gino Bisconti's birthday show December 29th at Stand Up New York. Then I'll be in Rochester, New York, first weekend of February, San Diego, last weekend of February. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool that people can go see you in person. Yeah. Whereas they just have to trust that I actually exist. Okay. <laughs> So somebody, John here wants to know, do you believe that more people are becoming less afraid to freely speak mm. at the pendulum swings or as the pendulum swings away from this woke nonsense? And maybe you could give people a brief, you know, example of some of the censorship or pushback you've gotten as someone who's not gone down that route. I hope so. I think judging by Twitter alone, again, I would have like a better sense Uh of, of what kind of most people are thinking. Right. I really try to not put myself in a, in an echo chamber. And I also am trying not to say, I used to say eco chamber a lot, but now I'm saying echo chamber because that's the right it's way. The, yeah. But that's the green version <laughs> of the echo I chamber. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like I had a day job up until last December, lost the day job because I would not get vaxxed. And it was at a corporate media, very big corporate media company that I should do a huge video on because I yes, know that that should. firing was was uh, politically motivated as well. Very Because you know, I got fired from my government job for having my podcast and interviewing people like you oh. who lost their job over, your, over the jab. Yeah. They wanted to fire me over that, but they could not prove that I was doing any of it on work hours, which they I didn't wasn't. care that I wasn't. They wow. just they, they just cared that they told me I was undermining their vaccine policy and I was on the communication wow. team. I said, well, I have, I have, I'm going to have a First Amendment right and you're the government. You can't fire me. I quit. That's no, I didn't quit. I made crazy. them fire me. They wanted me to quit. They 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 gave me a a thing to sign because they said we <gasps> won't an NDA. We won't, yeah, not an NDA because uh, I never in hell's half acre would I ever sign anything like that. But um, they sent they they told me they were going to contest unemployment, which I wasn't going to file for anyway. But wow. but they were actually going to contest my unemployment if I if I applied for unemployment claims. They were going to contest that unless I signed this thing saying I quit. Huh. <laughs> I that like, sounds very similar because my place fired me. They said, we are considering you voluntarily resigned. I tried to get unemployment. That was rejected. I couldn't get COBRA. couldn't get any kind of health benefits. Uh, they were like, fuck you. So that's so fun. Wrong. That was fun. That was a fun time. But um, what was the point of bringing that up? Are people feeling more just by yeah, based on Twitter out. alone, how Twitter feels more fun? It, it, I think so. There's a little bit more leg room on Twitter. But again, like I'm not I'm not at a, you know, a corporate day job anymore. So I can't really, you know, I, I'm a comedian and I'm like a YouTuber now. So I kind of am, I don't really represent like every person or even like the majority of people. I feel like I'm so lucky to be yeah. able to make a living this way. It was like always my goal to not. Uh, need to work for somebody else, especially not a fucking millionaire elite <laughs> media person um, who is like just obsessed. Like on his desk, he had all these framed photos of like him and Biden, him and Obama. It like made me sick. I was like, oh my God. Anyway, the point yeah. is, I hope so. I hope people feel, and I think people should continue to speak their mind. Like even just make more jokes, like make, just say more shit. Like just don't, people got to just keep hearing it. Like I think people are self-censoring 
regular people are self-censoring because they're afraid and it's like just like let it rip you know um just tell people to stop being so sensitive again that's easy to say you never know who at your job is like reporting you to hr so and like as far as comedians go like i'm very disappointed at the lack of comedians over the last two years who did not come out and yeah you know support or uh, or make any kind of a stand against the the vaccine mandates like that's really disappointing to me i feel like i'm one of the few who who uh who took a stand and cuz i said i no. wasn't going to perform in new york as long as de blasio had that vaccine right. mandate and it was like jim brewer <laughs> was like and maybe i can't really think of anybody else who who decidedly said no i'm not performing in places like this yeah and it's cuz ultimately comedians are like pretty selfish and they kind of are just like actors that are less talented and they really just most comedians just want to be famous and rich and like don't really stand for anything are you talking about tv news reporters or are you talking about comedians? <laughs> yeah like, i bet like reporters fall into that too you know anybody who's like trying to be on camera or on a stage unfortunately most of them like i would be lying too if i'm saying like i didn't want attention or to do well or but it's like, I just, I don't want attention for attention's sake. It's like, I want to have a message. I want to stand for something. I want to like uh, help maybe embolden others. But a lot of performers and reporters, I guess, they're just like, I just want to be famous. They want to just be like a, a Stelter or a Don Lemon. They just want to be a household name. They just want to be just, you know, roll, break in that dough. That, yeah, they're, I mean, that's starting to get weeded out simply because the TV stations are making reporters shoot and edit their own stuff nowadays. And I mean, you just don't have time to do anything, even like your makeup and hair. There's no glory to it anymore like it used to be, but that definitely, that definitely was part of it. I had an intern in one of my jobs. She found out what I made and like, spent a couple days with me and she was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to PR. Um, but there's like that, <laughs> that idea that you're, you're going to be that. Um, but I did work with a guy and I'll just say I worked with him in Tampa. So you guys can go look at my history where I worked in Tampa. There was a, and you could, I, I'm sure you'll figure it out. There was a guy who I worked with who was on television. He used to call his, I believe the face was the money maker. Hair was the deal sealer. I think. Oh yeah. So, all right, well, we're going to end it here on YouTube, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you live over on rumble and rock fin.